So we've been talking about retro video games. Somebody who wasn't here on Thursday. I wasn't here Tuesday. Oh, really? Okay. What game do you think we're talking about this week? Galaga. You wish. Miss Pac-Man. No. Do you know? Uh, I forgot. Astro. You know. <laughs> Julissa knows. Hey, Marley. Sleep? I can sleep. I see a Mario Kart. Oh. oh. Mario Kart would be fun. Alright, yeah, yeah. who's played who's ever played Crossy Road? Oh! oh Alright, so uh, hold on a second, Tip. Give me give me two seconds. Two seconds. Alright, who knows who knows what that game got its roots from? I used to play it all the time. Jeremy knows! Go ahead, Hunter knows! Yeah! Yeah, good job! Good job, Carson. Sorry, I called him Hunter, my bad. Alright, Frogger. Who, who's ever played this version of Frogger? All the adults in here have. Tucker's like, what's that? Pray for him, and uh, we will get this show on the road. Last, last, fruit of the spirit. That's, that's kind of weird. Hard. How many have we done? Six weeks? Nine. Seven? Eight? Nine? Man, are you a deacon? Nope. Those don't mean anything at uh, here. So <laughs> it's a label. You don't care for people? Mm. No. Just kidding. All right. Uh, yeah. Nine. Nine weeks. Man, that's crazy. It's already been nine weeks. All right, here we go. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for today. God, I just ask that you uh, be with Corey as he brings the, the message of the fruit of the spirit of self-control. Please, kids, that they hear it and that they apply it in their lives. God, thank you for this ministry, these kids in their hearts. It's your name we pray. Amen. Um, Tucker, I got a question for you. Yes. So, 
why does that word matter? Do you need to cheat off of my no. <laughs> So starts is what Paul uses in talking about the fruit of the Spirit, talking about the flesh, sinful na nature mm -hmm. of ourselves. So at Southern Hills, we came up with this word, Sarxy, talking about, hey, you're living in sin, you're living in flesh. It's a So Hills slang term derived from the Greek word Sarx, meaning flesh or sinful nature. Gotcha. Uh, so our words matter? Yes. So like if I was going to teach, I would actually have to use words. I couldn't pantomime pizza, which nobody got. I did the sign for pizza, and then I ate it. That's not right. And someone said sandwich. And then our words matter, because if I just said things like Saskatchewan broccoli, that wouldn't make any sense to the lesson, right? You would think that Corey absolutely lost his mind, and that was game over. But I was doing it to point a, to point a proof. What was that, Tyler? Um, to prove a point? Yes. Uh -huh. Our words matter. What you say absolutely matters. There's a couple of scriptures that I want us to look at today that talk about these words. And I think for us, we don't really remember this all the time. Especially in preteens. You guys have... You're in this phase that I absolutely love because the younger kids, the all-star kids, um, they don't really understand humor as well as you. Some of you are able to make me laugh with tears because you understand humor. And you can use words in such a way that I go, oh my gosh, did you just hear that? And a lot of times you might even see me like eye contact with a teacher and be like, Hold it together, Corey. Hold it together. That just happened. Because you have this ability. You can use your words to be hilarious. I've also seen it, though, where you use your words and you cut somebody deep. Um, you may have even, like, just completely been joking. But you say something and it hurts somebody's heart in a way that just, it, it's memorable. And if you don't believe it, um, I know some of you have some fathers in your life that will use their words and build you up. And you'll remember those things forever. You'll remember how your dad said he was proud of you. And then you might also be able to remember a time that your dad said something else that, that hurt. It hurt your heart that they would say that. And our words, they have this power to give life or to cause a lot of pain. And I think part of self-control is remembering these words that we're saying. And remembering when we're talking to somebody, what it is that we're saying. What, what is our heart behind it? Sometimes even with our humor. Sometimes we might use our words inappropriately. And it might be funny, but it might be inappropriate. And so today, with self-control, I want you to think about your words. There's a scripture that I want to look at. It's written by Jesus' brother. You guys know that Jesus James. Had a brother? James, he wrote my favorite book of the Bible. If I were to tell you, hey, Chase, I want you to open up your Bible, and I want you to read. I would usually point to either Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, or James. I love the story of Jesus, and I love James. It's just full of so much wisdom. And so will somebody read a verse in James today? Somebody want to be a reader? Caden, you got this? Yep. All right, here you go. We put a bit in the mouth of a horse to make it obey us. We can control the whole animal with it. Nice. One more. And how about ships? They are very big. They are driven along strong winds, but they are steered by a small rudder. That It makes them go where the captain wants to go. Nice. One more. In the same way, the tongue of a small, the tongue is a small part of the body. It bra but it brags a lot. It thinks how a small s it, can, it thinks think it can think about how a small spark can set big force force on fire. Finish. James three 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 five. 
Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part. It's not uh, on the screen. It's still the new international readers version. Thank you, Caden, for reading that. There's a lot to in this scripture right here. It's talking about our words. And it talks about a horse. Does anybody in here like horses? I love horses. Is anyone in here terrified of horses? No. I am terrified of horses. I think that they're like big, scary dogs that don't understand instructions that can just squish you. I don't think I think they're terrifying. Some of you love them, though. I'm scared of horses. And you guys know how to make a horse go, right? Yes, you got it. You sit on the back of the horse, you hold on to the steering wheel, and you turn to the left if you want it to go left, you turn to the right if you want it to go right, and that is how you drive a horse. Am I correct on that? Yes. Whoa. Uh, I've driven a couple of horses before. I've been to Colorado and drove horses up the mountain. I drove the horses down. We went through a creek. It was terrifying. The entire experience, actually, fun story. I went to the guy when we were getting our horses. Nicole said, do you have any of them that are like named lightning or thunder or death? And I went, do you have any that are like 50 years old? Because <laughs> I want the horses that are just gonna slowly walk and follow the horse in front of it. Nicole wants the one that might buck. Horses are scary. This isn't actually how you drive a horse. No, it's not. That's, that's, that's I don't even think you can technically say you drive a horse. You kind of just ride on a horse. And there's this great big cloth that wraps around the horse. It wraps around the horse's head. And you can pull that great big cloth and the whole horse's head turns. And, and uh, no, I don't think that's right either. It's, it's a, right. It's like a winter star. It's a yeah, fire. that's more. I think a horse would actually freak out if you did that. And horses are scary, so I don't think that, that would be a good idea. Horses actually have just like this little rope thing, and it goes into the the mouth of a horse. That's what you said, right, Kaden? It was a small bit in the horse of a mouth, and you can pull that bit with this little rope. And it's insane, because I've ridden a horse in Colorado before. All I had to do was this. If I did that on the string, the horse was like, oh, we're turning right. Okay. And if I wanted to go left, I went like that. It was super easy. If I wanted the horse to go faster, which I never did because it's a scary big yeah. horse, you, you could go like this and give it a little doo doo with your legs. Oh, yeah. uh, I, don't, I only think I did it once because he was stopped. But I was like, you gotta go. Uh, please, <laughs> sir. <laughs> uh, uh, but if you wanted to stop, you do two little doo doo, or just one, like, or just. Sit there for a second because I had a very lazy horse. You'd stop all the time. <laughs> this this is how you ride a horse. You have the string. You give it a little tug, and it directs this entire massive beast that weighs a lot. It's what? insane. Or a boat. Has anybody been on a cruise ship? Before? Yes. No, no, yeah. No, this one looks no, like no. no. no Tucker, let's go in March. He high fived it. He has to go with me. You know, a cruise ship, it's this giant, massive thing. It's basically a hotel. They have slides and putt putt and arcades and restaurants, plural restaurants. They're huge. And a boat this big has to be directed which direction to go. The captain says, turn this boat right. And the boat goes right. And it's directed by this, it must be this massive, like, rudder of a thing. It goes the whole length of the boat, and it's, it just steers this gigantic thing, correct? No. Yes. No. 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 You're close. No. Tyler, no. I'm saying, no. have you ever been no. underneath a cruise ship? No. Exactly. No. So it would like flip over? Yeah. That would not be a fun cruise. It would be, um, unless it was supposed to. It looks like it would have less weight on the bottom. You were just seeing it would flip over and then So what you're telling me is this is just insane. The rudder doesn't go this this great great big giant massive thing here. The rudder Brian, does it look oh, it's it's a lot. So this little rudder thing directs this entire boat with all the restaurants inside of it. Some of them have bowling alleys. A little rudder directs a bowling alley which direction we go. Go back to that other picture. Hold on, let's see that. You sure this isn't what it is? It's, giant, it's that little That's insane. So that scripture, it talked about a horse being directed by the 
bit in a mouth and a real small thing making this great big thing go. And then it talked about this boat and this small rudder directing it. And then it talked about a spark. Just a little spark can create a, a fire. fire. And that fire can grow and create a massive fire that Lord. can really destroy like everything in its path. There's places in the United States, even in Colorado and in California, where there might be this this person that goes camping and they 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 don't clean it all out. And like when they are finished, they leave a little bit of like just uh, just like it, it was burned yesterday, but not today, so it's it's okay. And they'll leave it, and then maybe a leaf comes and touches it, and that spark catches that leaf on fire, and then that leaf catches the other leaf on fire, and then the other leaf, and then the other leaf, and then the tree, and then the tree catches the other trees, and then the whole forest is on fire and it burns down houses and towns because of a spark. These little things can do this great big thing. And what it was talking about was our words. Our words can do this great big massive thing and it's controlled by this little tongue in your mouth. Did everybody brush their teeth today? Yes. Okay. I hope so. Yes. Making sure. Do you have a tongue? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I chewed on a bar of soap. Can anybody do the tongue spin thing? You press your tongue and yeah. What about the twisty thing? What about the clover? <laughs> can anyone clover? Jeremy touched his nose. Ew, can you clover for real? You do a wave. Addison, come here and show up. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. I want to see. It's bizarro. Ew. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, that's crazy. Can you do a clover? Jeremy, can you pick it? Yeah. Like, oh. actually get one. Oh, oh you can. That's your man! Yeah. I know why you married him. I know why you married him. That's amazing. <laughs> so this tongue has this this power, and not this wave power, and not this booger picking power. But this insane power. Now there's a couple more verses here, and... Man, they're huge. I don't want us to miss this, because the self-control thing, it, we really have to get our words under control. And James has some good wisdom here. So let's let's read a couple more. Another reader? Gracie? Yeah, no. You faked me out. You were just going, hey, hey, I wanted to say hey. <laughs> Tyler, take it away. People have controlled all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and creatures of the sea. They still control them, but no one can control the tongue. One more. It's a big one. With our tongues, we praise our Lord and Father. With our tongues, we call down curses on people. We do it even though they have been created to be like God. Crazy person ca can come out of the same mouth. My brothers and sisters, it shouldn't be that way. James 3, 9 and 10. No! <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think anyone heard that. It was James 3, 9 through 10. No! <laughs> So let's go back to that other verse, the one about the animals. It said that you can, you can control all kinds of animals, and I've seen this before. I have seen some of you go like this, and your dog sits. I've seen some of you do this, and your dog sits, because other people teach different things. I can just do this. You can snap and do this. You could probably teach your dog that if you do this, <laughs> then he will sit. <laughs> or lay down, or I don't really know. Dogs are crazy. I've seen even like in in a zoo, there's lions, fierce, ferocious animals that I would not want to get anywhere near. That someone can convince them to jump through a ring with fire. I don't know if I well I can convince the guys. I don't know if I can convince the girls to do that. The guys are just feel like it's a fire ring. And you go, okay, let's do it. Crazy. Yeah. I've even seen these giant elephants, massive, huge beasts. Where they will synchronized lift up their legs like this, and I'm like, how in the world do you teach this giant animal to do this? And the scripture says, people have controlled all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and creatures of the sea. They still control them, but no one can control them. Tongue. This tongue needs, needs, needs self control and on our own. I don't think we can do it. But with God's Spirit, I know, I know absolutely that it is possible. God's Spirit changes things. It's this fruit of God's Spirit. Is self control. Now, this other scripture that Tyler just read, the second one, it says that we praise the Lord with our tongue. And I've seen it in 456. We sing some songs. We're going to sing one of my favorites today. 
Ah, looking forward to it. But with our tongue, we, we praise God. We sing to him. And we curse. And it shouldn't be that way. And I love the illustration in our, our lesson. It talked about, let, we'll just picture. Let's say right now you're sitting there and you're going, all right. It's uh, 35 minutes into the service and uh, I'm getting a little bit antsy. I'm going to go get a drink from the drinking fountain. And you get up and you leave four, five, six missing the lesson. And I go, oh my gosh, shame on you. You missed the point of being here. But you walk down the hall, you go past the double doors, you take a right, you turn, you go towards the city station fitness, and there's the drinking fountains on the right, and you push the bottom of the drinking fountain. You get a nice, cool, refreshing drink of water. And then the next week, you go, man, I was sitting there, and uh, remember I got up at this point in the lesson, and I went and got a drink. Man, that was refreshing. We can do that again. And so you get up, you walk down, you miss the lesson. Shame on you. You should stay in here. Go to the bathroom before you get here. Get a drink before you leave. Anyway, you walk down the hall and then you go down to the double doors, you take a right. You go towards City Station Fitness, you find those drink fountains on the right, you push the button. Nice, cool, refreshing drink. Again. And then the following week, you do the same thing. You know, you sit here and you go, I'm not I need some water. And remember that nice, cool, refreshing drink down the hall. All I have to do is get up, walk down, miss the lesson, shame on me, go through the double doors, take a right, go down towards the uh, city station fitness, grab a drink, you push the button, and instead of ice cold, refreshing water, you get the sludge toilet water come out. Ooh. That you don't drink, right? No. Just making sure you guys would go, ew, no, don't drink that, correct? You wouldn't drink, if it smells like the toilet, you wouldn't drink the water, right? Mm -hmm. And you would go, no, 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 no. I no, thank you. I am not thirsty ever again in my life. Ever. Now, I don't know about you. Um, if that happened to me, I would avoid that drinking fountain forever. Like, I, I don't think there's any second chances on that. I'd be like, nope, that's gross. Toilet water is nasty. No, thank you. And it shouldn't be that way, right? It shouldn't be toilet water. Or should it? No. Should it? No. It should not be toilet water. Yes, toilet water's in the toilet. Nice, cold, refreshing drink is from the drinking fountain. But this, this is what the scripture say that we shouldn't have both of these praise and cursing coming out of the same mouth. My brothers and sisters, it shouldn't be that way. We should not have praise to God and filth coming out of the same thing. That just doesn't make sense. And likewise, drinking fountain, there should be no filthy water. It should always be clean, refreshing water that gives life. And it should be the same with our words. Our words should always be building each other up, lifting each other up. It shouldn't be cutting. It shouldn't be hurting. It shouldn't be bad jokes. And not bad jokes like dad jokes. <laughs> Sorry, right. I mean bad jokes like dirty jokes. That shouldn't be coming from our mouth. We should have self-control. And so today, I want you to think about this. Um, our words, your words, my words. Just the last day, have these words been in control? <laughs> have I built other people up? Have I torn them down? Or maybe even this. I know sometimes, sometimes, not always, God might give you something in your brain. You're sitting there, someone walks into 456, you go, hey, that's a new person. Someone should welcome that new person. Oh, I, that should be me. I should welcome this new person. God gives you this thing that you go, I am I going to be bold? Am I going to use my words to welcome somebody, to lift them up? Or am I going to keep it to myself? It's not always that you curse and do bad things. Sometimes you just don't do the good thing that God gave you. And so maybe this week, is that what you need to hear? Is that what you need self-control on? Is to do the right thing when God gives it to you. And man, there's so many consequences when we don't. If we ignore the new person, God gives us that. We should go say, hey, and we don't. They might not feel welcomed. Therefore, they might not come back. Therefore, they may never step foot in a church again. And man, God knew that this was a pivotal moment, so he gave you this word so that you could step up and do something and that you blew it. Or maybe, maybe sometimes we lose control just completely instead of loving somebody when they're more impatient with them because... Maybe our brother or sister does something that annoys us. Any of you the younger sibling? I was the younger sibling, which meant that I usually annoyed my bigger sister. <laughs> Guilty. Um, 
Are we loving, are we having self-control with our siblings, with our family, with our friends? And man, this is a new school year that's coming up. I would love if this fruit of the Spirit thing was like real and evident in your life. If your teacher is like, all right, so uh, Tucker, uh, last year at school, dude was crazy. He, he was angry all the time. He wasn't showing love. He wasn't patient. He wasn't kind. And man, self-control, I would not use that word to describe Tucker. But then this year he comes back to school and it's like, huh, there's something different here. Tucker is controlling himself. He's showing love. He's patient, kind. He's faithful and gentle. We'll love if these fruits were growing in our lives so much that as you went back to school this year, your, your teachers would recognize that and go, wow. It's not just that that person grew up, but God's spirit, I see it. I see the patience. So let's do that. Let's, let's put God on display with our actions. And today, let's think about our self-control. Let's think about our words that we're saying. And man, we're about to step into a time of worship. And it's, it's such a great opportunity for us to use our words to express to God our love. We're going to sing a song. It's one that I've been looking forward to all week. Uh, I, won't, I won't put it, I won't ruin the surprise. But for now, I want us to pray. Uh, and then we're going to have an opportunity to use our words to love God. So do that. Remember him this time. Let's pray. Father, you are so loving to us. You give us so many chances. You, you care for each and every one of us in our story. And God, I thank you so much that you give us a way to do the right thing, that you give us your spirit. And God, your spirit, I ask that you make this self-control thing real in our lives, that we see the words that we're saying, that we feel what that means, and that we use them to build people up, that we use them to point them to you. God, you are so good. You're worthy of our praise. You're worthy of our attention. Help us to have this self-control. Help us to use it for you. We love you, Father. I thank you for your love. I thank you for Jesus. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.